Hey everyone, today I'm going to be quickly showing you how to identify most of the sumacs that you may come across in the United States. I made a quick little dichotomous key if you want to follow that in the description to arrive at your answer quicker. Otherwise, I'm going to take you through the dichotomous key in video form and hopefully you can learn to identify the different sumacs confidently. So we're going to start off with two of the most common um, sumacs in the United States and they're often confused with each other and that is smooth sumac and staghorn sumac. So I made a whole video on how to tell these apart. If you want to check that video out it'll be in the description but I'm going to go over it again here right now. So staghorn sumac, here's the picture of the leaf. It has anywhere from 7 to 30 leaflets. They're serrated as you can see here if we zoom in a little bit they're serrated but they're not finely serrated. You can see the teeth very easily. It has a terminal leaflet and if you notice very closely on the branches here and leading up to the stem, this picture is a little bit blurry, but I'll show you better pictures in a second. Um, the stem and the branches are hairy. So they have little hairs on the leaves here, um, as you can see on this little leaf stem and on the main stem and other branches as well. So staghorn sumac is called staghorn because it's fuzzy like the horns of a stag. So it has um, it has some pubescence on its leaves, its stem, and its inflorescence and fruit as well. So here's a better picture of it, a more close-up picture. You can see the dense pubescence here on the stem leading up to the inflorescence here on the fruit. You can see each individual seed even has hair. And then on the leaves as well you can see um, it's fuzzy. So again, it's called staghorn because it's fuzzy. So that's what staghorn sumac looks like. If yours has fuzzy branches with long leaflets, serrated, it's probably staghorn sumac. Now there is a very unique look-alike and it's kind of endangered or um, threatened in the United States. I'm going to go over that right now. There is a pretty unique species of sumac called Michaud sumac. And it's typically found in North Carolina, in a very small region of North Carolina. There's populations within um, specific areas. Um, it's also reportedly found in South Carolina, Georgia, and down to Florida, um, but here on iNaturalist, none of those have been observed, only really in North Carolina. So if unless you're in this region, you don't really have to worry about this one too much because it is a pretty close lookalike to staghorn sumac. There are a few differences. The most obvious, I think, is the leaflet appearance. Um, these leaflets are not as long as staghorn sumacs and if you notice they have a slightly different serration pattern. The teeth are a little bit more protruded out. The leaflets are a little bit shorter and more round so they're a little bit fatter, um, more round and also the um, the stem is pubescent. It, it's pubescent just like um, staghorn sumac so pubescence isn't really a, a giveaway for one species or the other at least within this region. Here's an example you can see the dense pubescence here it looks pretty similar to staghorn sumac. And then here, lastly, here's another example. You can see the leaflets again, a little bit shorter, a little less abundant, teeth kind of protrude out a little bit more, and it is pubescent as well. So again, this is a pretty rare species. It's hard to find, and unless you're really within this region, you shouldn't have to worry too much about it. The next species I'm going to be covering is very, very similar to staghorn sumac. The only difference is that it is completely smooth, and this is called smooth sumac. The only difference is that there's no hair whatsoever on the fruit, on any of the leaves, or on the stem or branches. So as you can see here, the leaves are completely bare, the fruit is completely bare as well, there's no hairs on each individual seed here, and the stem is completely smooth. Oftentimes with smooth sumac, you can see the coloration of the leaves here, you often get this like light pink color, and you can kind of begin to make out that contrast as you become better at identifying these. So like I said, the only difference is that smooth sumac is completely smooth. If you see any hair on it, it's either staghorn sumac or the hybrid between the two. Here's another picture of smooth sumac. No hairs on the fruit or on the stem or branches. Everything else looks pretty much the same as staghorn sumac. You have a very similar amount of leaflets. The serration patterns are very similar and the leaflets look pretty similar as well. So just pay attention to if you see hair or not. It is also possible, although pretty rare, for staghorn sumac and smooth sumac to hybridize and form viable offspring. When this happens, it kind of displays some intermediate phenotypes, and you end up with a species called Rus ex borealis, or northern sumac, which again is the hybrid between smooth and staghorn sumac. So if you notice very closely, at first glance this looks like smooth sumac because the branches kind of seem smooth, um, the fruit definitely looks smooth, um, but if you notice very carefully on the stem here and on a couple of the leaves, you see a little bit of hair. 
Now the hair is definitely not as abundant as pure staghorn sumac, but it's not completely smooth as in smooth sumac as well. So when you see lesser hair like this, where it almost looks smooth but there is definitely some fuzz, and the fruit definitely looks like smooth sumac, it's probably the hybrid. Here's the range of northern sumac, so it's pretty much up in the north. For the most part it's around Michigan and the Great Lakes up here. Um, that seems to be where the distribution of the species or, or these species hybridize. It's a pretty tricky thing to be able to identify, um, but this hybrid has been published and I will leave a link in the description that is very helpful in determining if you're looking at a hybrid. Some lookalikes for smooth and staghorn sumac include the eastern black walnut, as you can see here. The biggest difference between these walnuts, smooth and staghorn sumacs, is that on the walnuts, the serration pattern is much more fine. If you notice, you can barely see these teeth along the margins here for the, for the black walnut. But again, if we look at the sumac, you can see the, the serration patterns are much more pronounced. Another commonly confused plant is an invasive tree called Tree of Heaven. The biggest difference between Tree of Heaven and the few sumacs that I mentioned so far is that if you notice at the base of each leaflet on the Tree of Heaven, you have this scent gland. It's just a little tooth that sticks out on both sides of the leaflet, as you can see here where my mouse is circling, and it has it on every leaflet. It has a couple, sometimes one or two teeth here, it has two teeth. These are scent glands at the base of each leaflet on a tree of heaven. With the exception of the scent gland, the rest of the leaflet is completely entire, so it's smooth. There's no other serration markers. If you see these scent glands, it's a tree of heaven and not a sumac. The next two species I wanted to talk about are prairie flame leaf sumac and shining sumac. So this is what shining sumac looks like. If you stumble across what you believe to be a sumac and the leaflets are entire, and you also see winged rachis, if you notice here, the space between each leaflet has a little kind of leaf on it. These are called wings. Um, it's also known as winged sumac. If the space between them is connected like this and it has a little bit leaflet, then it's either shining sumac or prairie flame leaf sumac. This example right here is shining sumac. Here's what the fruit of shining sumac looks like. When it's mature, the fruit generally droops down like this and it's generally unorganized and um, kind of sporadic. If you notice from staghorn and smooth sumac, the fruit was kind of in a nice pyramidal shape. For shining sumac and prairie flame leaf sumac, the fruit generally droops down. So in the winter time when all that's left is the fruit, this may be a good way to identify shining sumac. Again, the space between the leaflets are winged and the leaflets are entire. This is what prairie flame leaf sumac looks like. It looks very similar to shining sumac except the leaflets are noticeably longer and more lancelet, which means they come to a point at the end here and they kind of curve a little bit. These leaflets are definitely thinner, shining sumac, and they're a little bit longer as well. The ratchies are still winged, so you're still going to see the little bit of um, a little leaf between the leaflets here on the, st on the stem. Here's another good example of prairie flame leaf sumac. Again, the leaves are lancelet. If you notice the scientific name here, it's Rus lancelata, which is a clue um, for the leaflets. They're more lancelet than shining sumac. The leaflets are entire and the leaflets are long, thin, lancelet, they kind of curve, and the ratchies are also winged. So that's a good example of prairie flame leaf sumac. But perhaps the biggest clue is the range of uh, prairie flame leaf sumac, which really only occurs in central Texas, a little bit north Texas as well, and I think there is a very small population in New Mexico or west Texas. Outside of this region, prairie flame leaf sumac does not really occur. Outside of this region here, it's most likely shining sumac. If you see winged ratchies, shining leaves, and entire leaflet margins, it's probably shining sumac. Here's a pretty easy species of sumac to identify. It occurs in the south, um, southwestern um, United States, and as well as in Mexico. And it's called little leaf sumac, and the name pretty much gives it away. The leaves are pretty small. They are compound leaves. It's, it's more of a shrub than a, than a tree. Here's another picture here of the leaflets. It looks like it has winged ratchies. Um, the leaves are very small and shiny. It has a shrub-like appearance and it has red little um, fruits or berries on it. The next species I wanted to cover is Rus aromatica and Rus trilobata, also known as fragrant sumac or skunk bush sumac. Now these are pretty confusing and I still don't really know how to identify these down to the species because 
you can look at 50 different sources and they will all tell you different things about these species. Some sources say that these two species are actually one species, they're the same thing. Others say that Trilobata, or skunk bush, is a subspecies of Aromatica, and others will say that these are two separate species completely. On iNaturalist, they're listed as two separate species, but again, in my experiences with talking to experts, they will contradict each other and I really don't know who to trust here, so I rarely will ever identify these on iNaturalist, I'll just leave it as sumac. If your sumac has three leaflets, with this middle leaflet generally being the biggest, you're looking at Rus aromatica or Rus trilobata. Here's the fruit, here's what the flowers look like, and again, like I said, I don't think it's really settled. I don't know really what the published literature says about these two species and where they stand taxonomically, but I wanted to mention them in this video. There are two species of sumacs that occur on the west coast and in Arizona. The first one I'm going to mention is called sugarbush. As you can see, it occurs on the west coast here in Mexico, California, and there's a population in Arizona as well. This is what sugarbush looks like. It has taco-shaped leaves, so if you see the leaves folded along the midrib here and entire leaflet margins, no teeth, then it's sugarbush and has, nice little, has a nice little fruit as well. It's more of a shrub or a bush. Sometimes the leaflets aren't exactly folded perfectly along the midrib, but you'll see that the leaves kind of curl, um, as you can see in this one. Some of the leaves are perfectly folded like tacos. Some of them are a little bit curly in some regions, but this is what sugarbush looks like. So just a simple leaf, small shrub. Again, here's another example of a nice taco-shaped leaf, and this is what the inflorescence and um, fruit and flowers look like. Now there's a pretty similar looking species of sumac that occurs in the same region, so here's the range. Um, there's no population in Arizona though, but it does occur along the west coast of the United States and Mexico. Um, and this is called lemonade berry, so it, it does look pretty similar. Um, however, these leaves are generally straight. They're not folded along the midrib, and they don't have taco-shaped leaves. And also, these leaves have teeth along the margin, as you can see here. Um, and this one here, you can see the teeth along the margin, but other than that, they look pretty similar. The fruit looks the same, um, this one has a slight fold to it, but these two species are definitely mixed up a lot, and to make matters more complicated, you can have a hybrid between the two. I like to call this sugar lemonade sumac, even though that has no scientific basis. But when you're looking for a hybrid, again, it occurs where the regions overlap in southwestern U.S. in uh, along the west coast here of California. Um, this is where the hybrid zone is. What you'll see is a mixture of both of the features. So generally, you'll see folded leaves. And with the hybrid, generally what you'll notice is a mixture of the two features from both species. So you'll see taco-shaped leaves generally, as we see here. But instead of smooth margins, we'll see teeth on them as well. So if you see taco-shaped leaves with teeth or points along the margin, then it's probably the hybrid. Um, as you can see here, these leaves have both taco-shaped leaves and points on them, so it's most likely the sugar bush, lemonade berry cross, or hybrid. These leaves um, are pretty variable in size, so it does take some time to learn um, these species and how, to, and how they hybridize as well. The last species of sumac that I want to talk about um, in the United States is called evergreen sumac, or Rus virens. Um, it's evergreen because the leaves do not fall off, the leaves stay on, they're shiny, green, and it is a compound leaf. The leaflets are entire, again they're shiny, a dark green, and there are generally fewer leaflets than the other sumacs with compound leaves. Here's the distribution of Rus virens in the United States, again this occurs in Texas. Um, south or central Texas, um, throughout Mexico, Arizona, and New Mexico as well. So really only in the south and southwest will you come across Rus virens, but it's a pretty unique species and it's pretty easy to identify. And here's a good picture of what the flower and fruit look like on Rus virens. So pretty similar looking um, fruit to the other shrubby sumacs um, and the flowers as well. So pretty easy species to identify and I think that covers all of the sumacs that I wanted to talk about from the United States. Now I'm going to go on iNaturalist and I'm going to search for sumacs um, at the genus level and we're going to just practice identifying a few. I'll take you through the logic of identifying them and hopefully this will help you identify the sumacs that you're looking for or just help you learn how to identify some sumacs. Alright, so we're going to start it off with this one. 
Again, it occurs along the west coast here. It looks like either sugar bush or lemonade berry. And if you remember, sugar bush is the one with taco shaped leaves or folded leaves and no teeth along the margins. And that's what it looks like we have here. I don't really see any teeth. Maybe the occasional tooth on one of the leaflets like here if you zoom in really closely there. But for the most part, it looks like a um, sugar bush without any hybrid. Now this one's a little bit tricky, but if you notice, um, the leaflets over here are serrated. They are definitely pubescent if you look closely at the stem and branches here. And there are no winged ratchai. So this looks to me like staghorn sumac. For the most part though, um, staghorn sumac occurs in the north. It likes relatively cooler temperatures. You won't see staghorn sumac at all in Texas. Um, it's generally smooth sumac that occurs down there. So we'll go to the next one here. And it looks very similar to the one we just did. Very pubescent. Notice the hairs, the long thin leaflets with serrated margins. No winged ratch eyes, a nice pyramidal shaped inflorescence. And this one looks like textbook staghorn sumac. It occurs up north as well. The location is up north. So we're going to do that and we're going to mark it as budding, flower budding here. Now sumacs are, I forgot to mention this, sumacs um, do have two plant uh, sexes. So the ones with the fruit are the females, obviously, and the ones with just the flowers are the male. Um, now the, obviously the both male and the female flower so we can't tell at this stage if this is male or female. Alright this is a different one here. We have some shiny dark darker green leaves. We notice that the leaflets are entire. There's not They're not serrated. And we notice winged ratchies in the middle here. Um, the space between the leaflets have tiny leaves on them. So if we look at the at the region here, it's in Texas, so we have to consider um, both Shining Sumac and Prairie Flame Leaf Sumac. To me, this looks like Shining Sumac because of the shining appearance of the leaves. Um, these leaflets are pretty thin, um, but they don't bend or curve. This is a bit of a tougher one, but I think it's a little bit out of range for Prairie Flame Leaf Sumac, and I think this is Shining Sumac. Awesome, so we got a different species here. If we notice, it looks kind of like staghorn sumac from afar, but if we zoom in, we can definitely see that there are no hairs on the branches or on the stem here. And again, you can see that contrast between the green stem and the pinkish leaves. So that's a pretty good indicator that this is smooth sumac. So I'm going to mark this as smooth sumac. All right, let's do a couple more here. All right, this looks like textbook smooth sumac. No hair at all, um, nice smooth branches and fruit, serrated leaflets, non-winged ratchies. You guys got it. Smooth sumac. Lastly, I wanted to end with a cool cultivar of staghorn sumac that is sometimes planted as an ornamental plant in Europe especially and sometimes in the United States. Um, this is staghorn sumac. It's uh, the cut leaf variety, so it has a very different looking sh uh, leaf shape, um, kind of unique looking. Um, and nurseries have cultivated it and done pretty cool things with it, brought it overseas, and people actually plant this as an ornamental plant overseas. Um, so this is staghorn sumac, um, and I forget what they call the, the variety, but um, yeah, I thought that would be cool to share. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something, and I hope this video was helpful.